All right, obviously this week, UCF and Baylor are going to play first uh, time since 2013. And when you think 2013, you think UCF, you think Baylor, you think about that magical 2013 season. And uh, the person maybe most responsible for that season uh, is kind enough to take some time to talk to me today. Head coach, George O'Leary, kind enough to join us again here on the Sens UCF. First off, coach, I know it's a busy time for you. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. Oh, no problem. Anything I could do to help you out and UCF out, I'm glad we joined doing. Well, we were talking before we started recording, Coach. Can you believe it's already been 10 years since that 2013 season, since that Baylor game? Does it feel like 10 years? Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you, it's nice they're bringing the team back. They sure we deserve it. That was a, uh, an outstanding football team. You know, their, their toughness, their grit, integrity, great character. And, and you know, and when, when you look at that team, they had a lot of really good athletes, but they, they played well together as a team, and whether offense, defense, or special teams. And, you know, and I, it's funny because tomorrow they have an event at uh, Friday night uh, honoring the team, I guess some donors, and uh, it'd be nice to see them again. I haven't, I've heard from some of them over the years, but I'd like to see how they're doing and how their families are doing and everything's going well for them and all that. But, you know, when you look at the starting offense on that team, I would think most of them had a cup of coffee in the NFL. You know, so it was a talented group. It really was. As a coach, on that season, when you think about it, when did you know that that team maybe had the chance to be special? Did you Could you tell that early on in practices, or was it only once the games and the season started that you think to yourself, hey, I may have a really special team here? Well, experience is key in football, and I think anytime you have a lot of experience coming back, and we did. And the key is, you know, you, when you have a quarterback that can make things happen, you, you're well ahead of the game, and we had that coming back, and so it was it was a good situation, but we had a lot of returning offense and defensive linemen coming back. So I knew we were going to be strong up front, and then we had good skilled kids. So we had the ingredients to be a good football team. But we they practiced hard, and they did the things that were necessary to win games. And I think they paid the price. They used to always say it was much easier and uh, game day than practice and stuff. They look forward to games, not practice. It's it's always tough because you look at the schedule and there's there's a lot of games on that schedule that year that stand out. But coach, one of the ones to me that stands out a bunch is that third game of the season at Penn State, and, and we go into to that stadium, hundred plus hundred thousand plus people, we win the game. Is that was that a, a turning point you think for the kids and the team for for them to realize, hey, we we can really do this. We're we're going to be a formidable team this year after you guys beat Penn State. I, I thought that the kids went in there, and that's a I played there a number of times in the past, and. That's a tough place to go in and, and win. I think there's 100,000 and, and uh, 95,000 of them are against you and <laughs> stuff. So I think it's always a tough place to play. But they went in and, and uh, it was funny, you know, it was going against a kid who used to work for me. Billy O'Brien was the head coach of Penn State. And uh, it was a good good to see him before the game and a quick handshake after the game. But uh but I thought it was a, a, I, I knew at that time we were, we were well on the way to being a very successful football team. We just had to line up each and every week. And I think, you know, that season, I thought in conference, we were getting everybody's homecoming game. You know, <laughs> it was the best they were going to play. And, and uh, we had some tough games, but we hung in there and won them at the end. And that's the sign of a resilient team that, you know, can get things done. And they never lost faith in, the, in their team, and, it, and whether it's offense or defense or special teams. Coach, how often do you think about that South Carolina game? That's, that's a game that, you know, we were, we were up for a while. Uh, they came back a little bit, and, and that game was, was there for, for the taking at points in time. How often do you think about that game and what could have been if, if you all had beaten South Carolina that day? You know what I think about? We were up 10 nothing, and, and uh, we would have had some points before halftime again, and uh, we, I think we, got, we, we had no timeouts left down there. And, but I thought the key was at the end of the game we had an onside kick, and we should have recovered the kick. Uh, the kid went out of his lane. The ball would have hit him in the hands if he stayed in his lane. And we would have had an opportunity at least to tie the game because I thought we, well, we we lose by three uh, field goal, I thought, yeah, and stuff. Yeah, 28-25. So, but but uh, I think, you know, we, we broke down somewhat on defense in the uh, run, the attack us in the run game. We took the passing game out of the way on him. But uh, I thought basically uh, it was a game that we, we, we had a chance to win and, 
you know, you sort of let that one slide. Those are the ones that make you go from having a really good team to a great team and stuff. And that would have meant to led to an undefeated season. Yeah. Well, that, that, that team was nicknamed the Cardiac Knights because you, you all certainly took some games down to the wire and made some interesting games. You know, Memphis is, is, a, is a game that turns around late after a, a fumble forced on kickoff. Obviously, Louisville, um, you know, Houston, Temple uh, against the Cows. Oh. What, is there one of those games that stands out the most to you, Coach, in the, in the cardiac sense of being like, man, I can't believe we pulled that one out? I, I think the Houston game where uh, Brandon Alexander knocked the ball out of the kid's hand right before it went over the, for the touchdown late in the game that would have put them ahead. That was a conference game. I, I always had a goal with the kids. I said, I don't worry about anything else. I want to win the conference because that dictated what was going to happen as far as bowl games were concerned. And, 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 and really that led to a lot of good things. So I always look at conference games and not as much as the uh, out of conference games, you wanted to win them and stuff. And but I always try to get a good schedule out of conference, but probably the Houston game, because that was a game that, you know, we, we it was a conference game. We had to get it done. And, and the kid made a great play on the goal line, knocking the ball out of the kid's hands. who got sloppy with the ball. And, and uh, the t- there was no touchdown, and we we took over and ended up winning the game and stuff. So, but that one goes back. But all those games, I I think you gotta go through some tough games in college. But you know, they we pressed the limit on me. <laughs> some of the tough games. I, I mean, the catch by 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 uh, Wharton in the, the Temple game was outstanding. That's still one of the best catches I've seen in college football. And you know the. The catch, uh, the coming back with the with the South Florida game, I thought was outstanding. Louisville, yep. you know, I, I I was glad to beat them. I I was never a big fan of that school, and <laughs> you know, we came we came back, and you know, and and we did it the right way. And uh, I think that and I think when you come back when you're down by 20 points, I, I think that shows a lot of class and a lot of character of the team that you're coaching. Yeah, I want to touch on a few of those games. You, you mentioned um, the J.J. Wharton catch. I think what's underrated on that catch, Coach, is, is obviously a great play by J.J. Wharton, but I think a lot of people forget Blake Bortles got laid out on that play. I mean, he he opened up his entire midsection to a shot from a defender. Um, the, the catch was great, Coach, but what do you say about your quarterback and the throw he made that day for J.J. Wharton? Well, if he stayed in the pocket, he wouldn't have got hit. <laughs> <laughs> But no, he he had to get out of it. They sneak someone through. But I think he made a great play, great uh, and and took a hit. The, the good quarterbacks know they can sense when they're going to get hit, and he gave it up for the throw, and it was a great throw, great catch, and and again his next throw to uh, to push him in line for a field goal was outstanding too. So Blake was a was, was he had that it factor. He was a tough guy, and and uh, he didn't go around bragging about it he, he just showed it on the field and he had great uh, leadership ability the players had a great respect for him all right the louisville game can you settle this for us we've had a few guys on we've had godfrey on um yeah. that, that touchdown pass who was that ball intended to was it intended for jeff godfrey the the one that bortles threw uh, to put ucf that up? that was intended for jeff godfrey and ronell hall shouldn't go anywhere near it he he drove me nuts. He, he was jumping up to catch the ball. I thought he was going to tip the damn thing. He he was supposed to be ten yards to the south of that thing <laughs> and stuff. That was for, that was the Jeff Godfrey all the way. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's a that's a great throw and catch. That's a that's a great play call. Another yeah, it was another a great, great way to come back and uh, go against a team that was ranked in the top ten. You know, a great Friday night national TV it was a great win for UCF. Well, let's talk about um, SMU. I think a lot of people forget this game, Coach. It was, what, 24 degrees, I think, uh, and with a wind chill of 13. Is that the coldest game you've ever played in? No. I, I when I was at Minnesota when we played up at Green Bay, it was minus 18, okay. minus 35 winds. But college-wise, it was probably the – I mean, it was just ice and snow all over the place, and it was cold. I, I barely really put a, a knit cap on. I had a knit on knit cap on. I was freezing out there. but And, uh, again – Kids hung in there, and you know they won the they won the conference championship outright with that game. And uh, but it was a bad day. It was uh, ice, and lo- the roads were closed all, all around us. And I was just happy to get out of there on the plane and get back to Orlando. <laughs> but but a good win, and it gave us the conference championship. It, it did, and it, it propelled us to uh, the Fiesta Bowl, coach. And and what right. was your what was your first thought? So you know the the bowl projections come up, and the announcements come out, and it's UCF Baylor. 
What was your first thought when you saw on the screen that we were going to play the Baylor Bears? Well, I, I, they were very potent offense, and uh, I thought, uh, you know, so-so on defense. I, I thought there were things there that we could attack, some of the things I saw. And But I, I went back and watched them. I watched about – I watched their whole season, and, you know, and um, a lot of their scoring were born plays that basically the other team was misaligned or wasn't lined up right and, and was just getting there, and they that quick tempo uh, – took everybody out of their defensive structure. So I, I made a point. I went into the defense, and they had a game plan a page long. And I said, fellas, here's five plays. Here's all, here's all we're calling the whole game. So we, we went into that game, and they were going, Coach, we got to add more. I said, no, no, no. You're going with these five. This is it. You got five calls the whole game. And, and that's what we did. So those players saw every formation, run, pass, that they could see within that five scheme. And we got lined up. We were waiting for them when they got there and stuff, us to basically run all over the place. We didn't have to sub a lot uh, at all. So uh, we just played with the five calls. But we got lined up and we played good defense and tackled where they caught it and stuff. So, I, I, I mean, that was, I thought, the key to the game. Cause, and then getting a bunch of three and outs. That's how you disturb teams that want to know how to only run quick tempo is you got to get them off the field to break momentum. Joey Grant was on with uh, Brandon Hellig last night and uh, was talking about the game. And he said that when he saw how confident you were that UCF was going to win, that it gave him so much confidence because he said he'd never seen you as confident as he saw you leading up to that game. Was that Did, did you just know we were going to win? Was that something you were trying to instill in the players once you had a chance to look at the game plan? Well, you know, the players were listening to all the social media stuff and ESPN and everybody was going to get beat by whatever, how many points and this and that. And, and I, I, I thought that if I didn't show the confidence that was needed, that, that you know, we were going to be in trouble. So I went out and said, man, we can't do anything more. We practiced three weeks for this game. You're ready to play. And I think we need to go out and just execute. I said, you know where they're going to be. I said, go block them. I said, you know, basically, you know, where they're going to be with their offense. Let's attack them and be aggressive. And we limited the call. So, in fact, it was funny. That game, all you had to do was start the signal from the sideline, and they you didn't have to finish it. They knew exactly the call because there were only five calls in the whole game plan defensively. And, and offensively, we thought, you know, we could run the ball on them, and we did. And we did. And, you know, Blake had a great game keeping the ball. And, uh, you know, we – we made some great plays, but I tell you, the, the key to that game of the wide receivers yeah. blocking, they did an outstanding. Josh Reese, yes. I, I, you know, he, he blocked the guy for 30 yards downfield <laughs> on that Grinnell Hall touchdown. He, he, he great job. And that they did, that was a group that just hung together. And, you know, you could see they played for each other and all that. And, you know, as I said to the staff, I said, you know, man, congratulations. We, we took a lot of two and three stars and got them to play like four and five stars. I said, that's the key to coaching and great job. And then it was. And I think the kids the kids were in the game. And uh, I didn't let them get involved with social media or any of that stuff as far as getting looking at that and what all the predictors would think were going to happen. But, uh, again, uh, a great win for UCF, great turnout by the fan base and, uh, and well received by the Fiesta Bowl people. But Joey talked a lot about, too, the offensive game plan and, and the late Charlie Taft put together a great game plan. And he said they'd get to the yeah. line and Baylor did exactly what they thought they would do. They were in the exact spots they thought they would be in. Like they literally knew every play was going to work because of the way Baylor was lined up. How, how how much went into that offensive game plan? How much study did you and Coach Taft do to, to put together that, that we, great we, game plan? We, we always met every day after practice, watch the game, watch the practice tape, then watch game film. And, and, and basically, uh, you know what I did that year? I never filmed practice at the bowl game. I said, I don't want to watch practice. I said, we're on the field. Make sure you're watching the mistakes and get them corrected. All we watched were cut-ups of uh, Baylor uh, as far as and, – and, and we had time off the field. We didn't watch practice. I didn't film any practice at all when we were at uh, Fiesta Bowl, which normally people do. I, I said, no. Nah. I said, I said Let, I wanna, I'm going to watch game film and cut-ups of Baylor so everybody knows exactly when formations come out and stuff of that sort that we're all set ready to go. So we got a lot of practice time in with game with you know cut ups that we had on all their offense and defense and and that's what they watched and the kids responded really well to it. 
Coach, when you when you close your eyes and think about that game, is there is there one play or one image that that always comes to your mind first? Uh, no, I think there's a number of plays in that game that were really that were really. I think I think the key of the game was the first series when we took it down and I think we scored. Uh, you know, running the ball down and getting ahead. And then then the three and outs, I thought, were the key on defense where we had an opportunity to get them off the field. And, and that, that basically disturbs those no hurry-up no, no hurry offenses because they're out of sync. And that's what you have to do. You, and I think the key was just limiting the defense and getting our plays lined up and ready to play. And, and we had the right calls in, and, and, and I thought – I thought Tyson Summers did a great job calling, calling defense and, and doing things right. Charlie had a great game plan going in as far as the calls that were made. And I thought the whole staff really got into it. The sideline was into it. But they were a very confident team that, that my team was going into that game. That They knew they, they, could, they knew everything going on. Everything else was left to them to get done on the field, and they knew that. Well, one of my favorite pictures of that game is, is Blake scores that late rushing touchdown and he jumps up in the air um, and he's told stories later where he thought about spiking the football, but as he kind of got into the apex of his jump, he realized that you'd probably be pretty mad at him. So he didn't spike the ball. How mad would you have been if Blake I spiked that ball? I don't care who you are. You hand the ball to the official. <laughs> so, you know, as I, as I said to the one kid that one year, I, he scored, and I said, "I said, damn!" I said, "Act like you're done before." He goes, "Coach, that's my first touchdown." <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, I think you show respect. You don't throw the ball on the ground because then the official guy go get it. Give it to him because he'll remember that during the game. Kids don't. Kids don't understand that. They throw the ball all over the place, slam the ball down. The official has to chase it and stuff. But when you toss it to him or hand it to him, that, that's what they. I, I always believe they remember those things. I know I would if I was an official. <laughs> Coach, are, are you a keeper of memorabilia? Did, did you keep anything? I know there were the good night shirts and the hats. Did you keep any memorabilia from, from that night in the Fiesta Bowl? Uh, at, at the beach house in, in on, on, on the ocean here, I, I have a whole room full of uh, footballs and, and pictures and everything else and trophies just from UCF. And uh, But my lake home, I have all the stuff from George Tech and Syracuse. So. <laughs> I, I, I do have a lot of stuff, you know, articles written and stuff that people framed and put in picture frames and all that stuff. But uh, you know, come down sometime, I'll gladly show it to you all. You, you enjoy it and stuff, the, the trophies and, and all the things that have been accomplished and the players and the, and the bowl games and the championship game balls and all the rings and stuff. So, But, but no, I keep it, but I, I don't get a chance to come in. I, a lot of the people that visit over always want to be in the room and look around and read everything. And, you know, I, I sort of shut the light up quickly and say, come on, come on, let's go. <laughs> well, first off, I'm going to take you up on that offer to visit. But but second, yeah. is, is there a favorite? I know I'm, I know you're going to tell me no, but is there a favorite item in that room, one thing that, that stands out to you the most of, of your memorabilia of your time at UCF? Uh, I'd say, you know what? No, I, I laugh at it all the time, the Liberty Bowl. You know, they they gave the trophies to the wives, the oh. wife of the head coach. And in fact, we had the Liberty Bowl win against uh, Georgia, and uh, Sharon O'Leary's on the Liberty Bowl trophy. <laughs> <laughs> I always, that's hanging up there, and she points it out every time she has a friend come over. There's my trophy up there. Wow. <laughs> but, but, you know, the rest of them are all things that you'd normally see, but a lot of pictures and, and uh, players and, and stuff. And, and uh, you know, and I... I, I keep in, uh, a lot of the players call in and stuff. As I said to Mark Daniels, I, I think they call in to see if I'm still alive. But they, uh, <laughs> but other than that, then you no, know, it was a good group, and I'm just happy that a lot more successful and that they they're basically families and they're financially solvent and and they're doing the right things, and that's what it's all about. Not everybody can play in the NFL, but it sure as heck can get a degree, which I, I think that's what bothers me at this day and age. You don't hear anything about academics anymore. It yeah. bothers me. You know, so, but I'm anxious to see some of the players, and I'm sure that the DBs going to look like nose tackles, and the nose tackles going to look like DBs. You know, <laughs> they change so much, but it'll be it'll be an interesting night. Well, let's let's fast forward to this current Knights team. Obviously, um, uh, first game of the Big Twelve last week, a loss at Kansas State. What do you, what do you make of UCF this year and, and the jump they're making to go into the Big Twelve? Well, it's, you know, the Big 12 is, a, you know, uh, 
you know, it's a tough league. There are a lot of offense and limited defense from what I could see in past years. But I think the key is, you know, UC has, UCF has enough talent to, to get in these games. And a lot of the games are going to be, you know, that game against Kansas State was a one-touchdown game. And then you, you can't you can't commit all those MEs and stuff. You know, MEs are things that happened before the snap or after the, after the ball's dead, the offsides and, and the legal procedure and, and, and taunting and stuff. Those things get you beat and stuff. So I think I'm sure Gus will get that all corrected and get them down. But, uh, again, it, it's stuff that we're going to be very competitive in the Big 12, I think. And, you know, we got the right people. And, you know, I, I really like that young quarterback that played. I, I thought he got – you know, he got rushed a little bit on the field as far as, you know, some some delay of games and stuff. But, you know, I, I thought that they basically gave him some time and he has a good arm and, and I think he hurts you with his legs. And, you know, and again, we got, as I said the other day to Mark Daniels, you tackle with your feet, not your arms. <laughs> I think we got to start doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, because you've obviously been a part of a lot of big games on campus. I mean, the 2007 game against Texas, first game on campus, the first ever Big 12 home game for UCF. What do you think the atmosphere will be like? And and what does that do to players when it's such a big hype game like that in your home stadium? Well, I think anytime that was the biggest thing we have accomplished, I thought, was the facilities there and getting the stadium on campus. You know, you. Yeah, before that, you didn't have a place to call home. I, I never thought going down to the Citrus was always like an away game. And so, so getting the opportunity to get a stadium on campus, I think, gave everybody a home, a place where they could tailgate. They knew where they were all the time. And, and that, there's no question that increased the popularity of UCF football in, in Orlando and the area around it. And uh, I think that was key. But I think anytime you have a stadium, that's packed. And, and that's the big thing in the Big 12. I think you're going to find uh, a lot of these Big 12 teams travel three, 4,000 people, maybe more. So you're going to see a lot more filled, filled stadiums with Big 12 games because they travel. It's not like Conference USA or the AAC. They're going to, teams are going to travel and they're going to be well represented at the way games. Well, Coach, obviously you're gonna you're gonna be at the game. What's it like to watch a game with Coach George O'Leary? Are you uh, are you are you a nervous watcher? Are you uh, are you pointing out mistakes in the field? What's it like if I was sitting next to you at the game? What kind of what kind of person are you like to watch a game with? You wouldn't hear a word from me. I just watch the game, and <laughs> you know, and you, if you watch my hands, I, I the other thing I usually do is try to get the timeouts in. <laughs> okay, yeah, and, and things go well. But I, I watch you know what I do even when I watch TV at home, football games. I put them on mute. I, I, I don't want people to tell me it's a run or a pass. I can see that. <laughs> I, I try I try to see what they're doing philosophy wise. You know, I can see what their attack is and what they're trying to do defensively and offensively and special teams and so I, I keep it on mute and you know, and I enjoy that. So I'm like watching game film when I watch, you know, T V as far as football college football games are concerned. Yeah, that's that's the way. We're, I mean, there's some announcers, coach, that are really bad. So you, you may you may be onto something with the uh, the no volume there. But um, sure. Terrence Plummer was also on last night with Brandon Helwig, and uh, and and Brandon asked him a little bit about your relationship. And and um, I can't play the clip for you, but I'll paraphrase. Terrence Plummer said, "While it was tough playing for you, that uh, you are responsible for helping him become the man that he is today." What does that mean to you as a coach to hear people say stuff like that? Not about your coaching style, not about the games you won, but that you are a big part of him becoming the man that he is today. Well, that's what it's all about. That's what it's amazing how many calls I get from kids today thanking me for for what they went through and and tough practices and demanding respect from 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 for everybody on campus and stuff. And and I, I think basically is that the kids, you know, you're trying to teach them later life how to how to exist and how to move on with it. That's why academics are so important. Me getting you a degree and making making yourself useful. I knew they weren't going to make it. In the NFL, less than what one percent get there and stuff. They play college football, but I wanted to make sure they understood what it was to basically be a, a respectful father, if that's what I get when they get married, be a good family man, and and that and that's that's what I'm glad I'm glad to hear something like that from from Terrence because that means more to me than sometimes than a lot of wins. It really does. All right, coach, you've been generous with your time, so I'll, I'll get you out of here with this question. Give me your prediction for Saturday, Knights versus Baylor. Who, who do you think is going to win this one? <laughs> that's, that's a dumb question. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I think basically UCF, and you know, I'm just, I'm, a, I'm a football fan, so 
I'd like to see a, a, a tough game and UCF win it in the fourth quarter. Well, every game I like to see that way. I don't, I don't like to see blowouts one way or the other. I like to see a tough game and somebody wins it, hopefully UCF, which I think they will, in a tough game in the fourth quarter because that makes a better football team for the next game. That's how kids grow. Well, unless you were coaching. and At that point, you want to see a blowout, yes? Well, I did, but I subbed in pretty quickly. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, you know, I, if we were up by a lot of points, I, 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 I put the second team because morale is more important sometimes than, than scoring points. I wasn't worried about what the papers said or what AP said or the rankings because if you win the game, all you could do was win the game. And, but you wanted to make sure you kept your locker room intact and you, and you played the second teamers and got them and they, they deserve as well as anybody else. Awesome, Coach. Well, I, I can't wait to see it at the game on Saturday and, and you and that team get yeah. a chance to get on the field and get recognized for everything you did in that 2013 season and, and everything before and, and, and since then as well. And always appreciate you taking time to hop on and, and talk some football with us. And uh, we can't uh, can't wait to catch up with you again soon. Okay, Coach? All right. Thank you. I, mean, I appreciate it. I ain't going to do the help. Let me know. Thanks, Coach. Good night. Bye now.